last, the last word here on this uh, for you, Jessica. Okay. Good evening. Um, so maybe you know this or maybe you don't, but um, a four liter jug of milk in a northern fly-in only community is approximately 10 to $15, depending on the day. So it's interesting to be talking about um, uh, an income that's gonna be, um, sorry, this is kinda. Yeah. Oh, okay, there we go. So interesting to talk about a guaranteed income and who is that going to affect. And I can speak on behalf of um, my experience of living as a low-income Aboriginal child in the city of Winnipeg. I've only lived in Winnipeg, but I have experience working with and supporting and uh, growing relationships with Aboriginal communities across Manitoba. And so some of the information that I would like to share is that poverty takes away choice. Um, as a result, low-income families are um, expected to take what it is that they're given, be happy with it, be satisfied with it, and uh, make yourself successful. And then when you reach that point of success for yourself, then you can have that conversation with us. For example, which may be the reason that I'm sitting here today, as opposed to some community members. Um, uh, let's see. So a guaranteed income, um, I like the idea of how it contributes to um, a mental health state of a family. I think that uh, being poor has incredible obstacles that not everybody can understand. There are uh, obstacles such as not being able to get your ID. So in order to have a bank account, which is a requirement for a job, you have to have a bank account, you have to have certain identification, and if you can't afford to feed yourself or your family for the week, your ID is gonna be the last on the list all the time, and it's gonna be something like a continuous obstacle. And that's just one example. The systems that we have in place, the piecemeal that we talk about, are all oppressive systems. They're not systems that encourage and support people. So although we might say uh, that a family is, is getting social assistance or um, family allowance for their family, it doesn't mean that they're sitting back and just relaxing and letting the cash flow in. That's not the way it happens. There's lots of struggles. And uh, having a, a decent meal for your family is a challenge. So nutrition, you're having lack of nutrition, you're having stress and anxiety, and this all builds and contributes to uh, the medical bills that uh, everyone talked about. And, um, and so this is all a result of poverty. This is a result of the low income. And it's, it's hard, it's not easy to get out of those systems. And like I said about uh, you worry about feeding your family for the day or for the week. Nutrition is a luxury. You have um, a certain amount of food that you're able to afford, and if it's not good for you, it's what you can afford to eat, and that's what you're going to eat to survive. So when you're thinking about pursuing lifelong dreams, it's not something that happens in a low-income family. Um, I did come across some information where there was a concern of dependency, and that um, if we were to guarantee an income for, um, for families that they would uh, tend to rely on it. But I think what's important to mention in that case is that whether or not that's going to happen, it's something that already happens. So there are families who are um, already existing in these systems and uh, maybe they're having more children and you know receiving social assistance and family allowance. But what I would say to that is that if we're, if we're giving them a guaranteed income that they can buy nutritional food, spend more time with their children, mothers being at home with their children, and um, enabling youth to finish high school and to have that basic strength and confidence and uh, you know, tool under their belt, then that's creating a healthier community. And in the end, I think that's the overall you know, goal of what we should be providing for families in, in our province. And I think that uh, because of the, 
divide in low income and um, not low income, um, there's a feeling of not feeling welcome in an environment. So that's another obstacle. And um, I think that if there was a, a guaranteed income, that if you could sort of close that gap a little bit, then people are going to feel more, it's more attainable to be a part of that mainstream society. And if you can do that, then naturally, and maybe I'm just being optimistic, but you are going to have that opportunity to pursue some of those same opportunities that those other people have. And, um, and that, uh, yeah. What else do I want to share? That's it for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica.